It's time for season two of the Aberdeen, so you're very excited to get this underway. We'll be playing the first match of our league season today, as well as covering all of our friendlies, but more importantly, everything that we've done in the transfer window. There's still more to come, but we've done some great business in my opinion. I want to hear your thoughts on it, so let's run the intro and get right into it. Hi everyone, Jake here. Welcome back to the Aberdeen Save. I hope you're all doing very, very well. I know I am. I'm massively, massively excited for this season with Aberdeen. We came fourth last year. We started to build the squad the way we wanted. And this year, we're really going to go for it. Hopefully get that top three spot, beat Hibs, and then we can start challenging the old firm. And who knows where we'll go from there. Maybe even Champions League glory at some point. But we've been very busy in the transfer window. There's still a lot of work to be done. We're also in the Europa Conference league this year so that will add an extra level to this whole save that we're doing but I'm very excited to get into it if you guys are as well then smash that like button for me any support is massively appreciated I really do mean it and um, every time you guys are liking the videos it's helping so much and drop a comment below to help in the algorithm or just to get involved I do read every single comment I haven't responded to them all recently I'll go through the backlog and respond to as many as I can later uh, but yes all the comments are read so thank you guys for everything whether it's player suggestions or just letting me know what you've for dinner all of it is great and it really helps with the algorithm too subscribe as well if you haven't already as we push for 14,000 subscribers which is a crazy number to say soon hopefully to be 15k then 20k then 25 and seeing as it's the start of a new season i'll let you know there's also a discord in the description down below if you want to join that it's all about football manager there's 400 plus people in there now i believe um people sharing their saves their wonder kids asking for tactical advice all of that great stuff and the last thing if you want to get involved in helping the channel out out financially in any way you can become a channel member by hitting the join button and there's different tiers with different perks and whatnot so if you want to check that out please do but let's get started with season two shall we first thing i guess we should cover that i don't really cover is our facilities which we've been improving slowly since the start of this save just to let you know training facilities youth facilities are both 14s junior coaching 17 and youth recruitment 19 by the end of our time here i'd like them to be as high as possible but we're still predicted to come fourth in the league so not too much has changed in that sense and in terms of our friendlies let's get that out of the way we've been playing uh, fairly well I mean I don't manage the friendlies so it doesn't bother me too much at all what happens we lost a game to a Bundesliga side 3-0 which was not the end of the world we drew here and there won a few matches but our first match of the season is against Ross County which seems pretty winnable then we have a conference league match which I'll do off camera hopefully we'll be able to get through against Jude Gardens FC I don't know who they are but apparently they're actually favourites so we'll see how that plays out we got Hibs as well in the league so plenty to get on with and Celtic back to back as well it's going to be a tough old season but we're going to get through it and hopefully we can improve our squad depth so we can compete in these European competitions in terms of our transfers I've done quite a lot but I still have 1 million pounds left and 11k in the wage budget so you can bet your bottom dollar there's going to be more transfers coming in because that is a huge amount to play with really as an Aberdeen manager but there's not too much else I want to do with a squad in all honesty so I'll only wait for the right opportunities I won't just splash the cash and the reason I say that is because we've already improved massively. First thing I should talk about Phil Bardsley has left the club to go to Peterborough. He went for completely free but we've loaned out a few of our good young prospects this year. Liam Harvey is out on loan at Montrose. Shaden Morris has gone on loan to Shrewsbury. Dante Polvara has gone to the Kaiser Chiefs out in South Africa. Not the band, the football club. And Mason Hancock has gone to Partick Thistle on loan for the season. So a lot of our good young prospects are out there getting football in the hopes they'll come back and we can sell them on or integrate them into the first team but we didn't just do loans we've let go two key players in our squad to try and lower the wage bill and also let go of people that didn't want to be here anymore and the first one was joe lewis who we let go for completely free his wages were about five thousand pounds and he was only our backup goalkeeper i know he's been at aberdeen for quite a while um, and done pretty well for them and played a lot but it just wasn't to be we didn't play him much last year so he's gone to portsmouth in league one where he's a backup and yanga and biwa who we signed last season on a free deal and did pretty well for us decided he wanted to leave basically he knew he wasn't going to get a work permit once we extended his contract past this season and we weren't going to extend his contract anyway which I didn't tell him so he only had one year left and it was either let him go for free or try and replace him with a younger player and I decided to do just that so Yanga and Biwa has gone for £125,000 but now for the fun part the first one is this guy Brandon Hunter who we picked up 
for free. Another good young prospect to add to our brilliant youth team from last season. We've signed him on a free deal from Ross County on an approach to sign contract, whatever you want to call it. I'm not really too bothered about him, just someone to add to that rank of good young players coming through that will either sell on or make part of our first team in the future. I then wanted some backup on the left-hand side in terms of an inside forward, and the scouts were really raving about this man, Alan Forrest. And when I looked at him, I thought, you know what? In terms of what you'd want from an inside forward, particularly that finishing ability while also being able to dribble and pass quite well with good vision and penalties, he looks like a great signing. Now, something must be wrong with him because we got him for really cheap. He was transfer listed, 26 years of age. He looks like a perfect kind of player. I must have missed something by now. He's also consistent. He's played for Scotland's under 21s. And I really think he could be a big part of our team and deputise well for Vinny on the left-hand side. But um, yeah, he was at Hearts who signed him for free. Didn't use him at Hearts and then sold him to us for 90k. Uh, 90k feels quite cheap for him. I don't know why Hearts weren't using him. There's got to be something wrong with him. But as far as I'm concerned, he looks like a good sign-in. Versatile too. You can't go wrong. Keeping in line with last season though, I wanted to make a lot of our sign-ins at this stage in the save free transfer instead of splashing cash on players that just aren't good enough. I felt like we needed a backup left back and I found this guy from Chelsea who had been let go for free, Juan Familia Castillo, who is a pacey player, but outside of that, doesn't really have too much technical ability, probably also isn't ready for our level of football, but I just figured at 23 years of age to get him on a free, wages aren't super high, we'll either loan him out, sell him, or just use him, what I think we'll do at least, is use him as a versatile option because he can play pretty much anywhere. So if we're ever in a lurch, I feel like he could help out quite a lot, whether that's in defensive midfield, central midfield. I'm not saying he's good enough to play in those positions, but he is able to and has a lot of understanding of different positions on the pitch. So we'll give him a go, see how we feel, but I'm not too overly excited about this one. But based on his transfer value, maybe it was a good deal. With Phil Bardsley leaving, we needed someone to help out Jaden Richardson at right back. It was only him. And we found this guy who is a free agent, Darnell Fisher. Compared to the rest of our squad he's actually considered to be pretty good his physical rules are very well rounded yes he's very good in the defensive side but he's decent going forward too him and Jaden Richardson can compete for that spot but he is expecting to be the regular starter and I think it makes sense he has got more quality than Richardson he was part of Middlesbrough's team that got promoted last year which bodes well obviously not good enough to play in the Premier League for Middlesbrough they've let him go and I think we've done well to pick him up to be honest and I'll be interested to see how he plays out he's supposedly already a good player four players in this division now last season you might remember two of our centre-back options were Liam Scales on loan from Celtic and Yanga and Biwa with both of them leaving we needed two centre-backs to come into the club really to help with depth and I think we've got a great one here I did say I'd try and avoid older players as much as I could but sometimes it just makes sense and to find a Montenegrin international who is a leader and a very strong option at the back it felt right to bring him in considering his wages were so low his name is Esteban Sevelic I don't know how you pronounce it but he's been playing for Real Vallecano in the first division of Spain for a few years played a lot in the second division of Spain and I'm not saying he's world class or anything like that but he does come in as one of our better centre backs already Anthony Stewart's contract is expiring at the end of this year I'm sure we'll extend it but right now he comes in as a very nice centre back option someone who I expect to start the majority of our games this year once he's settled in a consistent performer and really helps with the depth at the back now because we should in theory have four good centre back. You might be thinking who the fourth one is. We've got Gagnon, Stewart and Savelic. Well, we bought in a young player and the first person of this window that we spent a pretty significant fee on. I've never heard of him before, but his name is Andre Caro, who our scouts were raving about. He's a 19 year old, six foot one, under 19 Spanish international who we've signed from Malaga for £875,000. He played pretty well for them when given the opportunity in the second division of Spain. And I have a good feeling he could develop up into a very very good player for us even though his passing and vision isn't great he is technically the best ball playing defender we have in the side he's a consistent performer not too much in terms of issues on his coach report I mean there's a couple of cons but not really all that much and he will settle in here over time. I think he's a great centre-back to have and we'll play him as often as possible. Much like when we signed Fabrizio Diaz last season, he's one of them players I'm willing to pay some cash for because I think if we can build around him and develop the club around these young players, we'll either sell them on for huge profits in the future or reap the rewards of the potential that they eventually reach. But I think Caro here is a great centre-back option. He's got some great attributes 
for his age and I'm hoping he'll be phenomenal for us this year. Who knows though, might take him a little bit of time to settle, but you might be seeing him debut in today's match. And as of right now, we have signed one final player. There was a Leighton Clarkson shaped hole in our side and Leighton Clarkson wasn't being allowed to come back by Liverpool. His contract is expiring at the end of this year, so we might try and pick him up there, but we needed a central midfield option filled. At the time, the scouts weren't giving me anyone to go outright and buy, so I started looking at free agents and loans, and I saw Nottingham Forest's Cafu had been let go. Now, this is someone that's been around a bunch of different clubs, played a lot of football in many different leagues, and was a big part of Nottingham Forest's championship side, not in the promotion season, but the season before. Physically, very well-rounded, as he is mentally and technically and he's a player that can play pretty much every role that we need in the midfield so I'm happy to bring him in how much he's going to play I don't know I expect him to play quite regularly to be honest because we are lacking a player since we lost Leighton Clarkson but he's a consistent performer he's someone that I think will make a great option for us this year we'll see how it goes we can always let him go after a year or so but I think at the age of 30 there's still room left in his tank to play a lot of good football for us so he is in and for now that's the last signing that we've made so our team is now looking like this. Roos is our best goalkeeping option. His contract's expiring at the end of this year and there's a thought inside of me that we let him go and maybe replace him with a new goalkeeper or we give the option to this man, Dane McMullen, a very good young goalkeeping option who's 16 years of age and has some nice attributes already but he'll get some game time in the Cups this year to see just how ready he is. Chances are at the age of 16 he won't be yet but he's our backup goalkeeper. Right back we've got Jaden Richardson and Darnell Fisher. Left back we've got Mansour as the main starter with Jack McKenzie being in the side this year and Juan Familia Castillo if we need him too. Centre-backs we've got Ross McCorry kind of but more a midfielder in my eyes. Anthony Stewart is the main one. Gangnon, Savalic and also Andres Caro. Midfield it's a bit convoluted but basically we've got Diaz and Stevens with Ramadani, McCorry, Connor Barron, Cafu and Dean Campbell who's came in this year who we might give a chance to. But I think considering the age he is I'd like him to be a little bit better by now. Considering Connor Barron is two years younger and looks the better player so we'll see but we will give Dean Campbell a go I won't just rule him out on the right hand side we've got Ben Arthur Ryan Duncan and Duke and on the left we've got Alan Forrest Adam Emsley and also Vinny Basujan who was brilliant last year and is one of the most valuable players we have at the club and up front we've got Miofsky and Duke with Alfie Bavage this year being promoted to the senior side in the hope we can give him some football and get him some goals as well and maybe just maybe have him be the young striker that we need in this squad. We want to make use of that young talent we've got here. In terms of our under 18s there's still a lot of potential in there yet but we haven't bought through. A lot of players who could be very very good for us in the future so we will keep an eye out if there's any good young players that we can bring through but I think that's everything we need to catch you up on. Club vision not too much has changed. They want us to reach the Conference League proper rounds, aka get through these knockout preliminary rounds. They also want us to qualify for it yet again, reach the later stages of the Scottish Cup and the League Cup. There's nothing too much in here about what they want us to do in the league. They also don't seem to want us to give contracts to older players, which is good. That seems like it's working in the same way that we're trying to build towards. And they're delighted with some of the finances behind the signings that we've made this season. Those free transfers have been huge for us and also getting a lot of people off the wage bill has helped a lot. Like I say, there's still a lot in the budgets. We've got a fair bit in the overall balance as well, so I'm happy with the way the club is moving. I feel like if we can progress in the Conference League, which is a big if, we can develop the club a lot in terms of the finances. I don't know how much there is in it in terms of a money pot, but if we can get into the knockout rounds out of the group stage, let's say, who knows how well we could do. But yes, let's pick our team here for this match. So, in goal, it's going to be Roos, right? It is. Darnell Fisher, you know what? We'll give him a start. Anthony Stewart and Andres Caro seems fine. Mansour, Diaz, Cafu, McCory, Ryan Duncan, Vinny and Miofsky there. We've got a good bench as well. The people that don't make the bench. I mean, I'd like to see Alan Forrest involved at some stage. So I think I'll put him in instead of Castillo for now. I also don't want to throw in too many of the new players straight away. So I think by incorporating one in Cafu, two in Fisher and three in Caro, we're not completely overloading the squad and there's some good players to bring on off the bench as well. I think we're about ready to go. Let's see how we can do in our first match against Ross County. Fingers crossed we can get a win. Let me know what you thought of those transfers in the comments down below though. Do you think we need to improve in a specific area still? I'm not sure I'm convinced by Miofsky up front, but at the same time, I don't want to buy someone and block the path of Alfie Bavage coming through. So maybe we'll give more chances to Duke this year. I don't know what we'll go for, but I'm hoping we can come out with a win in our first match, which I believe we didn't.
last season because I think we had Rangers first game last year. So the better form we can get in at the start, the better we will do, hopefully. So with that being said, let's kick off season two. Ross County lining up with a 4-2-3-1. I'm keeping my eye on Caro at left back to see how the youngster gets on. But it should be noted that he's not left footed and he's playing on the left hand side. None of our centre backs are left footed. None of them are really ball players either. So that might be something that I want to add. Maybe if we do let Anthony Stewart go next season we can look for a left-footed ball player to play on that left-hand side and then bring Caro into the other slot. Because ideally, I think we need to build around these good young players that we've got here. But it is an early chance for Ross County by the looks of it as they go forward. But Anthony Stewart, our captain for the season, cuts it out and plays a long ball forward to Vinny, who can't quite get there. And it's going to come back now through the Ross County players. But McCory wins it back well. It's a very good long ball to Miofsky, who takes a great touch. It's a brilliant volley. What a first goal of the season. Was he offside is the question. I'm hoping it's not because of the quality of that finish was really, really good. It's been disallowed. The linesman didn't put his flag up. It did look off when he first played the ball, and by the looks of it, yes, he is quite a long distance off. But you've got to give him credit there, Miofsky. Great finish, and hopefully that's a sign of things to come for him this season. Because last year, he really went through some dry patches and some good patches, like he'd score loads and then wouldn't score for days. Um, and I'm hoping this season it will be slightly different. Obviously, we are missing our talisman of the first half of last year in Leighton Clarkson. He didn't really do too much in the second half of the season. But first half of the season, I reckon he earned us 9 or 10 points alone. He was really that good. But this year, we've got Fabrizio Diaz, who, of course, we're hoping will be able to lead the team. I think he's going to end up as the best player at the club. We'll do well to hang on to him. It's a good ball in from him there. And Cafu almost gets his first goal in an Aberdeen shirt on his debut. But 30 minutes in, possession is all us. Chances are all us. Ross County yet to have any real chances of note. So I'm happy with the way this is going. We just need to convert that first chance of the season and we will be flying. Here's Ryan Duncan, who I'm hoping I can make a big part of the team this year. Only 19 years of age, I believe. A very good inverted player on that side. So we'll be happy if he can really settle in and hit the ground running this time round. Here's Darnell Fisher, though. He plays a good ball in. Miofsky is onside this time. He finishes slightly dodgily, but he has scored, and that is brilliant from Darnell Fisher. It's what I want to see from him. We've brought him in to be a better player than Jaden Richardson, and Jaden Richardson was exceptional last season. So he's got big boots to fill. In theory, he should be a much better player, both on attributes and coach report. He's much more experienced, too, and that's a great ball in and a brilliant finish from Miofsky. We're 1-0 up. 36 minutes in, it's as good of a start as I could have asked for, dominating the game, we've been brilliant so far. Although I've said that, and in the 44th minute, Ross County are getting their first chance, we do manage to defend though, and Vinny has a chance to break away here. Not really the kind of style that we play, breakaway football, uh, but it does work on occasion when we've got pacey players like this, but Vinny has lost out now to Randall for Ross County, who's going to run all the way down the wing, but Vinny does not stop, he's won it back again, and finds Andreas Caro at the back, who plays it back to Stewart, who by the way, I don't know if you know, but Stewart is very much a no-nonsense defender. I had a look, his passing is like four, which I don't think I'd even noticed before. I must have done at some point, but yes, never give him a ball playing defender role I need to remind myself of that but there you go he's carrying it forward nicely Diaz to Stewart this is brilliant football I said how bad he is at ball playing he's just played a phenomenal ball through and he gets an assist for Miofsky I swear if he's offside again he needs to go to spec savers because that's two very good goals where he's just been hanging offside for no reason is he on he is, a, I mean, goal awarded. He was on side. And all that crap I just gave Stuart about not being able to play the ball. He goes, watch this boss and plays a brilliant long ball forward. 2-0. Brilliant end to the first half. 2-0 up and we are dominating. Just to analyse those first half performances though. Darnell Fisher doing very well. Andres Caro playing well too. Cafu doing fine. Nothing special. Mansiore not really performing at left back. But I feel like that might be a tactical issue. Because the left back always seems to do worse than the right back in my systems. And I think it's because I give the right back so much licence to go forward. And I give the left back a lot of crap to do. So I'm not too bothered. As long as we're not conceding and Mansiore looks like he's playing fine. I'll accept that. Here is Diaz, though. A nice chip ball into Miofsky, who's looking for a hat-trick on his first game of the season. He calls for the penalty. Doesn't get it. Ross McCory loves these positions, though. And he takes a long shot just to hit it on the top of the net, just over. And I think, with the way that this is going, we can probably introduce some more of these deputants in a few seconds and give them some game time, as well as bring in some of those good young players that we've got on the bench as well that have came through our academy. It's about time we give them some senior football, I think. Miofsky might be slightly annoyed if we bring him off on a hat-trick, but he needs to understand that these youngsters need some game time, so let's take a look and bring some of them on, shall we? Firstly, I know he's not really a youngster, but we're going to bring on Alan Forrest 
for his debut for Vinny Basujan. We're also going to bring on Alfie Bavage up top and give Duke some game time in that inverted winger position. Darnell Fisher's had a good debut. He's on a yellow. Let's take him off. And we're also going to bring off Andres Caro, who's had a good start to his career, to bring on Savelic. And that's everything we've got. We can't do any more. I think that's about right. Ramadani, unfortunate not to get on the pitch, as is Connor Barron. Both of them, very good players. But hopefully we can see some late sparks from some of our young stars here. Maybe Bavage can get a late goal, which would be great for him on his debut for the first team in a competitive match. He did score in a friendly, if I remember right. But again, I wasn't managing them. And But here is Jaden Richardson, who plays the ball to Duke. He could square it to Bavage here if he gets it right. Instead, he finds Forrest. Oh, it hits the bar. And then, for some reason, the Ross County player tries to blast it in his own net. He does miss, but we're very unlucky there not to take a 3-0 lead and get a debut goal for Forrest. But I love the fact that he's such a good finisher. He looks like a striker that's been stuck out wide in terms of his attributes. And that's exactly what I want from my inside forward. I haven't looked, but I bet you he's probably got better finishing than the majority of the strikers we've got at the club here. So hopefully Forrest can be a big success on that left-hand side. Um, I'm going to demand a little bit more just to see if we can get a final goal. Diaz is going to go for the long range free kick before the game ends. It's just wide. I imagine that's going to be that. But Miofsky has been the star of the show, scoring twice today. Everyone's performed the way that I'd want them to. No real issues and a brilliant performance overall from the side. Anthony Stewart goes home with the Man of the Match award, showing as much as we can buy some new players, the captain is holding his ground in this team. But we've still got, like I say, a million pounds or so to spend. Everyone that we signed so far, if you put all those transfers together, probably doesn't even add up to a million. So we still got so much more business to do if we want to, but I'm not going to be stupid with it. But there we go. That is the end of our first episode of season two. Hopefully we can go on to bigger and better things this year. We just need to make sure that these transfers work out and we can really take this club to the next level. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you have enjoyed it and I'll see you next time, guys. Thank you and goodbye.